So hello and welcome back and in this video um, I want to start to implement the logic of our small little webshop here. So for that let's first create a new file and link it here with the script tag. Let's call this main.js. this and in here we want to have window load and this will be our main function basically And one thing we want to do is to get our buy button or let's get all yeah that's that simple let's just implement our first button and then when we add some elements um, dynamically then we will um, adjust our js file so let's just call this buy button. And this is previous and I'm not sure how I'll named it shop item okay shop item and then button and the query selector um selects the first element that matches the selector here so if we did it right then we could Add an event listener. Mm, let's just register a click event. And we can use an error function here to just do something simple. Let's see if that works at all. Mm. First, need to inspect here. Zero. And our button was pressed, so it seems to work. What we need to do now is to get a reference to. Um, the price and maybe some I'm not quite sure if we get the price from the HTML that is of course very insecure we should rather get an ID or something from this button and then add the ID to the card items and then later in the card we will have then um the option to um select a payment provider and pay for the stuff and so on and so forth so probably we should just add an id to the card and we set um our card items as an array and save that in the local storage, something like that. So let's take a look first at how we can get a reference to anything, because I'm not too sure 
on how that works again. So let's see what we have in our event. Um, here we do have an, a source element. And that's this button. And yeah, that's probably enough. Um, on the source element, we later need to set an attribute, probably. Yeah, probably we need to set an ID later or an, an, another attribute where we can get a value from. But just for the sake of this, we can then, um, what was it again, the source attribute, a source element here it is. this let's see yep and we get locked this button perfect now let's add another element maybe and test it out Item. Just the kitten and this one is only seven dollars. And then um, we need to set an attribute here. Um, let's Say ID something and then here ID another let's have convention to say to start the ID with item so we won't have any conflicting IDs here. And then we can also buy buttons. Document queries left all. And then or I zero I smaller than by buttons dot line in this way we can iterate over every i button let's leave it this i button By buttons at I. Oops, something like this, and this should already give us the button that we press on. Let's test it. Online shop we should now have two kittens. Here, a cute kitten and just a kitten. Let's see if we press this one. We have here something and here. Another, just as we expected. 
And now we need to, of course, get the ID. That should be button.id then. Let's see how that works. Item something, and here is item another. Perfect, this is exactly how we wanted it. Now we just need to um, get the items from our local storage and also set it again to the local storage. So we um, save our items that we bought every session. Um, so let card equals local storage that gets item and then card and we want to have card push this should just be an array and if card is not if card is undefined or card something like this if it's falsy then we would like card to be a new empty array. Yeah, let's do this on a new line. I think this looks clearer. And card push this. And then at the end, I would. Yeah, this needs to only be done once. Start. But the saving needs to happen anytime we push something, so at least for simplicity. So local storage dot set item card gets set to our new card where this one was pushed pushed into. I think we can delete this line. We can inspect this in the browser also. So let's see how that goes. Let's see if I'm recording. Oh, okay. I'm recording. Thankfully, this would be pretty stupid. So get by this one, by this one. Well, let's see if we can do it this way. Hope storage that get hopes. Let's see if we can get it like this. And it looks like it. But it's not an array. It is comma separated. Let's see if we can reload and then add more. And of course, now card is not a function. Yep. This is what I have suspected. We need to do it differently then. We can, of course, use JSON to do some magic for us here. 
we store our array as, as a JSON object and then we can parse it again. So when we store it, we can simply to stringify it here. String, string B5. Like this. Now it should be fine and working. Of course, we need to delete our current card. So, yeah, that still looks wrong, of course. So, let's delete our local storage. Remove, hello, remove, item, start, add. So now everything is working. Let's add some items, reload the page, add some more items, reload the page. Now let's see what is in there. Block storage dot get item and this looks correct now. Yep, this looks fine. Mm, maybe we can have a card is not defined globally, of course. But we could just take a look. Do this as an area. We have fifteen items in here. Yep. This looks fine. And I also think this was it for this video. I'm not sure what else I should cover here. Later on, uh, we need to think about how we add items here. I thought about having a backend, um, wh which we can contact with the fetch API to get items. And then also I need to think about how to implement the actual payment and the card. Um, but for now, I think this looks good and it's working. So yeah, um, let's continue next time because I'm out of ideas to, uh, on what to do right now. So yeah, see you next time.